Now we come as promised to the inverted index. So the inverted index has uh, two aspects to it. One is the vocabulary or set of words which we're using. And the other is the inverted file which maps the uh, each, each word into the documents in which it is present. So this lexicon is just a set of terms uh, which are these stemmed uh, words and tokens in a given collection. The inverted file is just a, a list for every term which has the documents, the offsets, which is just the location of the document. You need that if you want to actually find raw phrases. For the case of King of Finland, even if we had King of and Finland in the document, we, uh, as we'll see later, we don't necessarily store King of Finland as a separate entity unless we've decided that's so commonly searched for as a, as a contiguous string that we want to do that. Uh, rather, we have King of and Finland. When we find all three of those actually exist in a document, we then look in more detail at the offset or location of the document to see if King is followed by of, which is followed by Finland. <coughs> and there's all sorts of additional information you might also wish to encode, um, such as the what the data, what the original data used to be after all these operations that came on it. Uh, possible information about the, uh, uh, the, the um, segment of the document that appears and things like that. So we are, this is of course a very sparse matrix because each document only has a few of the number of words in it. And each, and at least apart from the common words, uh, a lot of the words only appear in a few documents. So that's why it's a sparse matrix, rows and columns of words and documents. So here's just a simple example with three documents, the good, the bad, and the ugly. As good as it gets and more. Is it ugly and bad? It is and more. Those are three documents. This document, here we haven't done stopping. So the is word one, good is word two, the is word three, and so on. Here we have the uh, term. Here we have the um, the number of um, documents that it appears in. So the appears only in document one, but it appears um, three times in document one. Good appears in document one and document two. Bad. You know, in a clever index, you might even think good and bad ought to be um, related, because one is exactly the opposite of the other. And bad appears in documents one and three twice. So that's the document frequency. Remember, that's what we need for IDF. And uh, here is the uh, term and its frequency. And of course, as we mentioned, we may also store the location. And we've effectively discussed some of these details here. I've described how you might handle complex operators already. And um, we have to build this index, and then we have to worry about it running very efficiently. Running very efficiently is sort of a storage problem, uh, because the actual looking up in the index is obviously not itself terribly time consuming, but just it will be time consuming if the index you want is stored on disk and not in memory, for example. So here is uh, again an example of an inverted index. Um, we have two trivial documents. The inverted index has three words in its step, Mankind and China. And those, each of those words points to the documents that um, they're in, and then here's a typical Boolean query, mankind and step, which obviously uh, will only give you one response, document one. So in indexing, um, well, we've effectively done, told you how to do the keywords. The keywords are the result of all these various reduction to normal form of the words in the document. 
it points out here some other subtleties, namely 3 slash 12 slash 91 um, is actually the uh, 12 slash 3 slash 91 in English, where you always put the day before the month. And it can also be written as March the 12th, 1991. So there are many alternative ways of writing the same information. And you will get a better answer if you recognize that ahead of time. Um, and you also have to, this is the segmentation issue, you have to worry about the difference between um, the possible importance, rather, of a heading designation. And of course, we have to worry about aren't and are not being recognized as the same thing. And remember, the apostrophe is important. Um, computer with apostrophe S means something for computers with S.